A long time ago, cubes were totally square, pretty much had no reverse corner cutting. Many cubers took to themselves to round off the pieces of their cubes. However, in 2012, one particular way of rounding off the cubes became quite popular, and it was largely credited to a cuber named Florian Krishik, who did a modification of the Shankru 5x5 and the cubes had an average world record, and he made a tutorial on how he did his modification. A lot of people have been calling this modification the Florian mod since then. In addition to just the Shangshu 5x5, like people were also doing it to the Shangshu 4x4 and 6x6. Eventually, this also caught on with mass produced cubes, which initially manufacturers were just making their cubes round everywhere. But later on, it was just found to be more optimal to have the four outer holes bigger, while the inner holes are a bit smaller to preserve the cube's stability a bit better, while the outer layers rely a bit more on reverse corner cutting. So in the end, this shape kind of stood out as the more optimal shape. Of Not simply just making a hole on the surface here, but we have to go all the way down the piece. And in addition to that, not everything needs to be equally rounded. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this command, which is to transform. And I'm going to click on the corner. I'm going to choose rotate. And I'm going to pick this axis. So this misaligns the corner, so it, it's a bit like turning the cube. But of course, this angle is a bit too big, so I'm going to choose something smaller, like 10 degrees. Now, now you can see that the corner is sort of set to reverse corner cut against this X center. So I'm going to save this command. I'm going to delete the transform command later after I have finished rounding the piece or at least performing the Florian mod. I'm going to click on these two pieces and hide other parts. Next, I'm going to use this command called fillet, which is the same command used to round uh, off pieces. But what I'm going to do differently this time is there's something called a variable fillet. So I'm going to select two edges of the X center first. And then I'm going to click on variable fillets. And this sort of allows you to click on the individual points. I want the rounding of this piece to be as parallel to this corner as possible. This The bottom one is my default 2mm rounding. The top one, I'm going to increase it slightly. Let's say I'm going to pick 3. And now you notice this slant is much more parallel to, a, to the 10 degree misaligned corner. Then I'm going to do the same thing to the axis on top. So I'm going to click on this axis. And let's say I'm going to make it like 4. 4 is quite vertical, but it's still not as parallel to this corner, this edge of the corner. So let's pick a bigger number like 5. And yeah, five looks like it's like you can you can compare how this particular slant here is parallel to this. So it looks like a good value. So I'm gonna save this command. Next, I'm gonna repeat this to the other side, except that the corner stock is a bit too thin. So I'm gonna just round off the corner stock first by a value of one. And then now I can round off the three sides of the corner. So yep, I, I will just click on them first. In this case, I also want my base to be about two. And I'm going to click on variable fillets. And right here, we can do the same thing. Click on the tip here and try to make it as parallel to the X center as you can. So in, like, let's say four. And OK, I'll say that is quite similar in angle. Uh, even though we don't have Another other misaligned pieces around, we know that the corner is just symmetrical in all directions, so we can just click on this other axis and just choose the same number, which in this case, the, soft, the software has already chosen the same number for us, which is 4 millimeters, and I can click on this one. If you think that, that that is not enough, you can actually round the piece even more, but for now, I'm just going to keep it at 4. Or actually, on second thought, since I've already rounded out this one by 5, I can actually try to make it a bit bigger as well and make my outer hole just have a like consistently 5mm rounded. So another thing I'm going to do is, you notice the corner is double anchored and this anchor also clashes against the foot of the X center. So I'm going to apply the same logic to this particular piece. And then after that, I'm just going to click on transform like the command to transform and just delete it. And the rounding of the pieces is kept. It's just that the misalignment is now gone. So everything is back in alignment. And 
So the next piece type is the wing and it, it, this is where things get really annoying. So I'm going to hide other parts first. So what I would usually prefer to do is to actually use an earlier fillet that I've done. In particular, the one for the key center. So this particular one that has been done earlier. When I click on it, it says fillet 4. So I'm, I'm just going to show all parts again and then go to the go to the wing, hide other parts. And then I'm going to click on fillet 4. Edit. And I'm just going to add on the same set of surfaces that I've already selected. So this helps to clean up the wing a little bit and help to round off these parts. Then now I can start to proceed with the outer area. So one very annoying thing that I've found out is that this, like these two lines just refuse to round at the same time. So I'll usually round them off one at a time. So I'll click on this one and I'll make it two. But I actually have the ability to do something really fancy down here. So I'm just going to do it. I'm going to click on asymmetric. And notice this kind of rounds it off in an asymmetric manner, similar to how a three by three edge is rounded off. So I'm just going to choose, let's say three. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll pick two and two and four for like the very base. And I'm going to click on variable fillet. Click on the top one here. And I'm just going to pick bigger numbers. So like, let's say three and I'll, I'll pick four and eight. Yeah, and I get a really nice like curve. Then I'm just going to repeat the process on the other side. And Okay, in this case, it, I have actually gotten something that I don't really want to see, which is, you notice the, the outer layer is in this direction, so we want it to curve this way. Here is the mirror image, so we want the curve to be longer in the horizontal direction and shorter in the top. But you notice that 4 is now controlling the vertical axis. So here, because I made these two separate commands, I don't have an issue, I can just switch them around. But if you made them the same command, you pretty much can't proceed. So I, I would recommend rounding this particular edge here and this other edge here as two separate commands. So now again, I'm just going to do the same thing, variable fillets and click on this vertex here. And basically just choose the same two, but instead of four and two, I'm just changing them to eight and four. So I've done the same thing on both sides. Now I can proceed around this one and Okay, this kind of glitches it up a little bit. I can just make this number smaller and okay, now it the piece looks okay. And then okay, for this edge, I think I would actually prefer a bigger number. So let me see if I can do it. Three doesn't work. Okay, in this case it doesn't work, so I would just have to resort to editing editing the previous one. Then I have to round these two edges as well. Okay, so, so the next step is, obviously we have made this big hole here, but we are going to now round off the other smaller holes and it's pretty much the same logic as rounding off these bigger parts here for the internal pieces. And also we need to round off all the edges here, like all the horizontal edges. It's also the same logic for the internal pieces. So I'm just going to speed up the video from this point onwards and One thing I forgot to mention is if you can't select this due to the construction axis, you can just hide the construction axis. So at this point, I'm actually done with all the pieces, but I just want to do a little bit of cleanup to the corner because I forgot to mention this earlier. 
So notice that because I made a cut for the torpedo, there's actually an extra section below. To get rid of this, what you need to do is just delete this and then we just click on like all components of this and then it will naturally be gone. So this is the finished corner. And then this is the finished wing. Note that like when I round off the pillars, the bottom parts here are also kind of part of the Florian mod as well. So I actually chose a slightly bigger number for these, these parts here. Like I chose two millimeters for this and one millimeter for this. For the outer parts, because like generally you notice that everything fans out. So for the heads of the pieces, I tend to use a bigger radius. The, while the roots are much narrower, so I round them by a smaller radius. So this is also two millimeters. This one is just a one millimeter radius. And then this is the X center, and it's pretty much the same thing here. Even for those smaller holes right here, I round them by two millimeters. But at the roots, they're all one millimeters, except this one here, because this is at the, this part here is in the same vein as the Florian modded part of this piece. So I round it off by two millimeters as well. And another thing that might be common with the Florian mod, which I might try it here, is to round this other edge here. Uh, unfortunately, it isn't really working out, so I'm not going to do that. But sometimes it, sometimes when we actually Florian mod cubes, we actually do round this edge and give this whole piece a curved back. So this is what the X center is going to look like. Of course, the internals are from the other video. Uh, so yeah, the next step is to print this thing which this is where the tutorial is going to diverge into two routes because the method of 3d printing is going to influence how you're going to process the pieces from this point onwards